<clears throat> Thanks, Jaren, for joining us. Uh, let's start off with Jared first. Jaren, I wanted to ask about, you know, kind of a hypothetical situation in the sense of what's going on at Washington State with the coaching staff and that turmoil that, that's going on with the program. You guys have had to play games where coaches have been out for other reasons or different things. What do you think as a player it's like when it's something like that where it's kind of a political issue and there's a lot of different factors going in as, as a player? How does that impact, would that impact you if that's what was happening at BYU? Yeah, it'd definitely be tough, you know, especially, I don't know who, you know, who was, uh, you know, let go from their job up there, offense or defense. But uh, I know for us offensively, you know, you lose your coaches, game planning and stuff may be a little different, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of guys on your offense. There's still a lot of coaches on the staff. And like you said, we've been through it before. So just puts more, more need to be a little more urgent early on in the week to prepare for the game. Cause you know, the day's still set, you still got to play. Um, I think in the past, you know, when that's happened to us, we dealt with it very well and, you know, for them at Washington State, I'm sure they'll be ready to go and those guys will be fired up and, you know, maybe have even more drive to, to go out and perform well. So, uh, yeah, tough situation, but, I mean, you know, it definitely comes down to the player just being prepared and, and doing their thing. Let's talk about this week. Never easy to have two losses. And, you know, I know the players aren't happy with that. What have you seen as you've tried to, to get off that, you know, break that and get back on the winning side? Oh, just, just you know, short memory. Just moving on. You know, from Monday's practice till now, it's been everything focused on my Washington State. You know, it's as if nothing happened the last week or the last two weeks. Um, and just moving forward and, and focusing on getting a win. So just having a lot of energy, getting back to the football we play. Um, you know, just having a lot of energy in the building, a lot of excitement to play and, and just appreciate the game. Jay and then Jake. Jaron, people talk a lot about defense wearing down or, you know, it's probably a little more physical to play defense. Uh, they actually hit instead of get hit, I guess. But how offensively, how do, how do you feel like you guys are doing as far as your freshness and just your, uh, you know, and your general kind of health, well-being? Yeah, I think, we're, I think we're good all across the board. You know, every team goes through their, their wear and tear throughout the season. You know, we're going into week eight, and this is usually when you start to see some separation amongst teams, you know, with, with as far as depth goes and, and the health of their players. But everyone's got to deal with it. Um, I think we've done a good job up to this point. Our, our training staff and our strength coach, uh, strength staff, they keep us right and strong and healthy throughout the season. So, you know, I think we're feeling really good and, and just excited to get out and play this week. I mean, it looks like the forecast for Pullman or for call for rain. Looks like it's going to be a real rainy, gloomy day. Um, how do you feel like you played in the rain last time against Boise State? And do you think that is a factor at all? Yeah, I mean, we didn't, I mean, it didn't rain the whole game, right? Kind of came on pretty quick. Um, but regardless, you know, we got to be prepared to play in the rain, uh, do whatever it takes this week in practice uh, to prepare for that because, like you said, that's how it's going to be. So, at the end of the day, football goes on, you know, no matter what the weather is. So, we got to prepare to play our game, to run the ball, throw the ball, whatever we got to do. Um, so, at the end of the day, you just got to go out, just get through it, find a way to win. Jaron, what is the key to getting the running game back on track in your mind? Um, I don't think there's any, necessarily any key. You know, I don't think there's one thing last week that, that really stopped it. You know, I think that's what most people refer to. Um, other than I think this week, we just got to play faster. We got to get ahead. Uh, we got to score more points early so we can run the ball more. You know, and whenever we haven't been able to run the ball as well, I think it's been because we're playing behind, you know, specifically the last two weeks and we just had to throw the ball more. So um, just starting out fast, you know, sticking with our offense, executing and, you know, the more points we score, stay ahead of the chains and, um, ahead of the scoreboard, and then we're able to continue to keep the run established, I think. You've had back-to-back -back career games with, in terms of highs passing yardage-wise the last two games. <clears throat> Is that, do you feel like you're finally reaching what you can do as a passer in terms of being a quarterback? Um, I think every week I get better. Um, I think the last two weeks, you know, it's, I don't think it's anything different the weeks before other than just situation-wise, right, what we needed to do. Um, you know, we're a very balanced offense. We can do everything that, you know, as far as passing and running the ball. So in the last two weeks, we just called for more passing and our receivers just did a great job getting open, making plays. And, and for me, I just feel like, yeah, the game slows down week by week. And, and you, you build more chemistry over the season with your receivers. And, and I think that's a little bit of what, you know, goes into that. But uh, at the end of the day, it comes down to those guys getting open and making plays like they do. Mitch and then Jared. Jared, you mentioned that, that chemistry with – Sorry, you, you mentioned that chemistry with your receivers. Last week, you and Puka had a great connection in, in that game. Do you feel like that's something that uh, 
can be a, a big piece in this offense in the coming weeks and not just make it a one one game deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, any guy can come out and play. You know, I, I have confidence in each of those guys to have that type of game every day. Uh, but the fact of the matter is some weeks it just depends on, you know, you know who's playing on what corner, who we think we can go after. Um, and so I think we were very lucky to have a, an arsenal of receivers that can all do what Puka did on Saturday. What do you feel like you've, uh, now that you're getting uh, actual time and games, completing games as the starter, where do you feel that you're making the, the biggest jump in, in your game um, this season being QB1? Um, I think just, just game management, you know, taking care of the ball is something we just pride ourselves on as a team. And so I just try to play my 111th as a quarterback. You touch the ball every single play. And so that's the, the most important thing for me. Uh, that's how I secure my job and, and help our team win. So just taking care of the ball and doing that every single play and then getting the ball into our guys' hands. I think that just gets better every week. And, and that's my focus of what I need to do better each week, you know, no matter what the result is of the last game. <clears throat> well, one more question from, from me. Uh, <laughs> if memory serves me right, and I know it was a different staff, but didn't Washington State recruit you a, a little bit? I, I know it would have been with Leach's staff, but uh, did they recruit you at all? Oh, shoot, man. I, I, maybe. I, I, I could be I could be wrong. It's been so long. I have, it's been a minute. I, hey, man, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I'd like to say sure. I hope so. You know, that made me feel good. But, uh, no, I don't remember. I'm not sure. Darren, I wanted to ask just about the kind of piggybacking off of what Mitch was saying about your evolution and something I've been curious about, the evolution of making checks and calls at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. A lot of teams have gone to the looking to the sideline and getting it, you know, called in. As the quarterback right now where you're at, how, how does that work for you? And, and what kind of options do you have as far as what you see and what you look at deciding to yeah. do at the line of scrimmage? Yeah. I mean, without giving out any information about the offense, obviously, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of different plays where we look to the sideline and, and we'll call plays. And, and there's a lot of chances for us in certain looks for me to check a play. Um, you know, for based off what I'm seeing. So I think we've done a good job over the years with the offense we've known for four years, just kind of developing it each year and, and slowly getting to the point where, you know, the coaches trust us and we trust, trust them to, to kind of go on the fly sometimes when, you know, the, the play clock's against you. You can't have the coach calling stuff, you know, after we look. So um, I think it's just a mixture of a lot of th different things we do. But, uh, yeah, definitely how good defenses get, you know, as years go on and how, um, you know, much they show and don't show, it's, it's nice to have the ability to check based on what we see there on the field. How much fun is it when it works? I mean, I know sometimes it doesn't. That's the nature yeah. of the game. But yeah. when you make a check at the line or make a call and the play works and it's successful, that's got to be pretty rewarding. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like, I mean, as a little kid, you always see Peyton Manning, Tom Brady doing it. You know, it's, it's just fun to, to look at. And then just to actually do it is pretty cool. So it's part of the game. It's fun. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's cool. So we'll do last question from Jay. Hey, Jaron, every TV broadcast, they always bring up the, the fact that, you know, you have a little baby girl. Um, I just thought I'd ask you, how is fatherhood going? What's it like? Maybe what, what's the hardest part about being a quarterback and a father at the same time? <laughs> That's my favorite question of the day, Jay. Thank you. Take any opportunity <laughs> to talk about my little girl. No, it's fun, man. It's, uh, it's really, it's humbling. It's, and it's, uh, that kind of makes me balance out my life a little better, you know, um, put aside some distractions in the past, you know, not having a kid or even not being married before that. So, you know, for me, it's, I think it's made me a better quarterback and a better football player because, you know, when I'm home, I'm able to focus on family life with my wife and my baby. And then, you know, when I'm here, my wife knows that, you know, this is what I'm doing. And, and she pushes me to, to use my time when I'm here to just get better and um, in any spare time I have. So, um, you know, it's nice for her to, to have the baby to enjoy time together while I'm gone. And, and it just, you know, takes that burden off my shoulders to feel like, and I got to be everywhere in, in, in one place so I can just focus on football and, and do what I love. And I was grateful for my wife being so supportive. Awesome. That's all from us. Thanks, Jane. Thank you.